It's not like it's a walk in the park. October. Dutch Harbor, Alaska. Ready to rock, ready to go out and catch some crab. It's king crab season, it's time to go out and Try and be a badass again, man. In the 25,000 square mile red crab grounds, quotas remain extremely low. As a result, more captains will steam out to the smaller blue grounds, making this elusive and less profitable crab even harder to catch. Coming your way. On the east side of Dutch Harbor. Good hustle. Excellent. Is the Seabrook. I'm a little nervous. There's a lot more guys going blue crab this year than I'd ever anticipated. It sounds like the whole fleet's going up. The last two years, Junior has been one of the top guns on the blue crab grounds. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be a big challenge with that many boats up there. It's a small chunk of real estate. It's such a small area of crab up there to fish that there's going to be more gear in the water. There's going to be more competition. So I'm going to really going to have to have my A game going. At the southern end of Dutch Harbor, is the 113-foot time bandit. I got a million dollars invested into this boat, and it's not ready yet. Spent almost every dime I made the last two years. All the money I'm going to make in the next three years is in this boat. At the mouth of the harbor, a new boat joins the fleet, the 108-foot Cape Caution. We're going to get this thing tied up. Let's get all this stuff ready to rig. Let's get this thing cleaned up, because after last year, I want to get out of here as quick as I can. I'm already thinking about leaving, and I just got here. Captain Wild Bill Rakrowski's days on the Kodiak ended in divorce. Kodiak was like a marriage, you know? They don't always last forever. Opportunity came up, so here I am. Across the dock. Hey, Soper, bring him back too high, and then that's going to be it. The wizard is nearly locked and loaded and ready to shove off. Last year's blue cane crab was a disaster. This year, failure's not an option. Did really put some serious money into the boat, fixing up everything. Got brand new grain, the seawall back there, the brand new deck boards, all sorts of stuff. Across the harbor, on the Northwestern. A guy can only last on deck for so long. I think I've been here long enough, and I've earned the right to run the boat. You know, it's, it's, it's an... The start of the season renews deck boss Edgar Hansen's hopes of taking the helm from his brother Sig. By now, you should trust me. I'm the type of guy, I'm either all in or nothing, you know? Well, I can tell you one thing. Right now, he hasn't done the prep work. I have. And all of a sudden, he's going to fish blues. I take offense to that. What's up, Cap? He's not even talking to me. What's up, boss? So you got everything stored? <laughs> yeah. That's for your blue crab season. Huh. You should know that. If you're going to fish blues, you got to have tags. We haven't even talked about blue crab yet. That's why I'm not exactly happy with you right now. With me? What the hell did I do? This is your responsibility, not mine. It's mine if I know it's going to be mine. Nobody's even, we haven't talked about it. That's the point. That's the whole <laughs> point. That's why I'm pissed. You haven't called me once. How much quota do we have? You don't even, you, you haven't asked me. And I'm <laughs> pissed. Because every time we bring something up, you never want to talk about it. There's more to run on a boat than just I understand that, that. I understand that. 
And I'm not gonna give you a silver platter and say, oh, everything's done. Here you go. It doesn't work that way. But while most skippers are getting ready to throw lines, Captain Elliot Neese is notably absent. You know, in all honesty, I'm kind of not surprised that Elliot isn't here this year. I mean, I haven't seen him. He should be up here. He should already be ready to go. Last season, Elliot faced huge setbacks, both at sea. Never have to step foot on that bad boy again. And at home. You know, Elliot, you know, I'm just going to ask you to leave. Right. Now, his career in the wheelhouse may have come to an end. No owner's going to let a guy run a boat and not produce. You're going to lose your job. OK, take up all your slack and make it fast, OK, Roger? We're out of here. As the wizard departs for an uncertain fate, I can't believe it, we're leaving. The fleet follows her into the unknown. We replaced every hose on this boat, every engine on this boat. Now it comes the easy part. We just got to catch crap to pay for it all. Never a dull moment. You just like to get out there. You want to get the pots in the water right out of the gate. We've got damn near 200,000 pounds of king crab. We hit $10 a pound. That's a $2 million load. While the Cape Caution, Wizard, and Seabrook steer north. Can't wait. Destined for the remote blue crab grounds. Dutch Harbor is the 107-foot saga. And right now, we're standing on my new boat. Um, a lot of people said it couldn't be done. I love proving people wrong. <laughs> During the off-season, Captain Elliot Neese was fired off the Ramblin' Rose. But the young skipper bounced right back with the help of a massive bank loan. By the time Paul said no, I had a million and a half dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I have $10 in my bank account. Every dime I had, I spent on the boat. While the saga sits in Dutch, 200 miles northeast, the 125-foot Northwestern steams onto the Red Crab Grounds. Well, we got five minutes to set. I was just kind of hoping Edgar would want to, like, know, you know, like, where are we going? What are we going to do? Captain Sig Hansen and his brother Edgar remain at odds. But he's been awful quiet. Maybe it's uh, because we had a little quarrel that he's kind of backing off. So I start bringing change. We've got roughly 210 pots all together out on a prospect run right now. Okay, ready? Roger! All right, let her go, guys. Here we go! Yeah, baby! Going over empty, coming up full. Here you go, Freddy! Keith grids his fishing grounds with pots. Hits and misses will tell him where the crab are and aren't. And hopefully, which way they're headed. Using this intel, captain and crew will bomb the biomass. Last to arrive on the blue grounds is the 108-foot Cape Caution. It's going to be an interesting season because there's a guy that usually runs this boat, and Kirby, and he stepped aside to let me drive. Now, the boat's former skipper, Kirby Mitchell, serves as Bill's engineer. My saving grace is being able to work on deck with my son. Following in his father's footsteps is 19-year-old Greenhorn, Mikey Mitchell. Hopefully on one side of it, we run into the bugs, run into the crab. One thing that is the same with the blue crab from the past is they like the rocky spots, the high spots. And there's a hump out here that I'll call it the mound. And I guess my new strategy for this one is around the mound. The skipper's plan, attack an underwater rock formation. He fished a decade ago. Hey, 
Hey, Michael. Pretty important you keep that back foot down. It's really awkward at first, but that's how you get tangled up. Hey, watch that back foot. For six hours, the crew sets 90 pots across the blue crab grounds, leaving only 10 to go. Holy Mikey. Hey, get the line up, Mikey. Get it off the kit. Keep that foot. Mike, you're a horrible listener. First day we lose a guy, man. That's crazy. Come on, you guys, watch him. He doesn't know what the f he's doing. Hopefully his mother doesn't get wind of this. Is the wizard. Man, I'm just dying to haul those pots down there. Captain Keith Colburn readies to pull his first pots of the season. 13 hours on it. So if uh, something crawled in it, that would be a real good sign, considering we didn't see on 13 hours last year. the numbers we're looking for. About a crab an hour. We're going to set it back up. After last season's meltdown on this fishery. I'm pretty really good numbers. So boss man said we set it back. Keith is finally figuring it out. Back at the pot dock in Dutch Harbor is the 107-foot saga. The stack looks good. I mean, you can see we got new everything on them. New lines, new bridles, new trailer lines. All right, well, I just want to say thanks to all you guys. Did a hell of a job getting all the gear ready. You know, it's been a dream I know in a crab boat, and I'm lucky and happy to share with all you guys my first time. I don't know if we've made any money yet, but, you know, I'm just as broke as everybody else. So let's go out there and make some money and have some fun at it. Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. yeah. We didn't get a proper christening, and this is all they had in town. So we're going to do a little Dutch Harbor champagne right here, and let's go fishing. That feels good to get away from the dock. I'm actually excited. I'm pretty pumped on going fishing. Spend so much time and energy into getting this boat. And this doesn't work out. I'm completely broke. 450 miles northwest from Dutch Harbor, on the Blue Crab Grounds, is the 109-foot Seabrook. Pulling up to our first string of crab pots. This is it. This is what's going to make us or break us right here. With 145,000 pounds of blue quota, Junior's strategy is to nail the crab and move on before the fleet can catch up. It's all excited now. First pot of the season! Right yeah! Come on, baby, treat daddy good. See what happens. Come on. This sucks. This is a bad way to start. Three. Wow, that's bad. I don't know what the hell is going on, but this is a bad deal. This blows. Four. Not what we're looking for. It's horrible, man. Ones, twos, threes, four averages. It's killing me. It just sucks. Spawn from Satan. 
I gotta believe, though, that somebody's on something. The young captain turns to the plotter. Hmm, interesting. To get a line on where the veterans are fishing. Maybe Keith. Even the best guys gotta ask for help every now and then. Sometimes you gotta swallow your pride and make calls. Right on, top out. 20.8 average, almost a 21 average. It's actually pretty much the numbers we're looking for. Hello, wizard. Hey, Keith, it's Junior. Junior, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. Nice day, I got anyway. Uh, fishing sucks. Uh, I'm at a loss. Let's just say that. Uh, that's a first. You know what, Junior? I went shallow. And we were seeing as high as the 20 average through a few strings. Right. Well, that's better than what I'm seeing, I tell you what. If you want, I'll work with you, and we can uh, try and get something hammered out here. I've got a spot out deep in the corner there that might produce something, too. I got no problems at all with that. You want to try and make a move to get up here? There should be plenty of room. All right. See ya. Bye. The legend had his tail between his legs and needed help. And that's what we're going to do. There's very little boats down here, and we just chose to come down here and try to play our own game. OK, we're on it. And this is the one that I deemed Rocky. That was the nickname, because we've got a lot of humps and bumps in here. Maybe it's the sucker's going to be a knockout. First pot's coming up right now. Rocky, come on, Rock. There's meat right off the bat. I like it. I like it. Pretty good. This looks awesome. 40s, 50s. Yeah. Come on, boys. 48, 48. That's what we're looking for. Get him, Rocky! Knockout. Awesome, that's good. 10,710 pounds times $107,027 pounds. I'm living large, baby. We're about to get bigger. What the f There's another boat already that's been setting right down the side of this string. And he's about four tenths a mile away. And he just paralleled it right down. We're doing 60, 70, 80 steady. This is what we've been looking for. And I'm not going to give it away. We're here. He set this one here. And then he set this one there. I mean, we could just move and play it safe. But he's hurting my fishing. So I'm going to take two strings and go right down the middle there. Really? It's a big gamble. It's going to be tight, man. It's like threading a needle. But that's what I'm going to do to help with it. So we blast them. Just blast them. Pull our first spot. We're already $800,000 in the hole, so we got to I hopefully have a good start to get this thing going. In the off-season, the Hillstrand brothers went deep into debt, repairing their boat. We need a little, we need a little bit, more, little bit more, Lord. We need a little bit more crab this year. We need it really fast. Come on, baby. Yeah! There we go. There's crab. I see crab legs. I got crab. I got crab. Thirty-five. That helps okay. pay for something. That's a good start. <coughs> That's three thousand dollars. I'm trying to help. Stop the bleeding. Oh, 
These are seven pounders. These are big boys. That's what you want right there. Each crab coming aboard brings 60 bucks to the boat. That's you. I got 22. Oh, I had 20. That's 42 crab. I'm a little nervous about what we see today. It's freaking blue crab. First pot of blue crab. Here we go. We're going crabbing. They suck. Whoa! Oh. What a way to make a buck. We're blue crab fishing. We got two or three, baby. We're rocking it. Making matters worse on deck. Everybody from bow to stern, look out. Kirby, a veteran fisherman, is struggling at the hydraulics. Being a crane driver right now is what's going on. Good, good, good. Watch out. I'm, I'm not that good at this. It still bewilders me how Kirby could fish this long and not spend any time on the hydraulics. But he's got his kid out there watching. And I really hope he gets it together. After an all night grind. Let's start letting him go here. Be careful. Captain and crew reset the last of their pots on new grounds. These guys are going to have to work hard to pull this off. We should have figured this crane out by now. Hey, dip! How about you get this the out of the way? Yes! Have not improved Kirby's skills at the controls. Keith and I got a little alliance. We're going to cornrow our strings up side by side so nobody else can get any gear in between us and try and get our quota and get the hell out of here. To protect our hotspot, Junior and Keith will use a technique known as cornrow. The partner boats will tightly lay parallel strings, preventing any competitors from setting in between them and taking the crab. While Keith and Junior's partnership kicks into high gear, 15 miles to the west is the Saga. First spot of the season, we're driving up on it right now. For Captain Elliot Nice, the moment of truth has finally arrived. I've been wanting to own a crab boat since I was two years old. Finally did it. And at the end of the day, if I don't make my payments, thanks and come take my house and take my boat and take everything else. I can see a five average right off the bat, I'd be pretty happy. If you can get five average through all the gear and do a couple hundred pots a day, it'll get you 50,000 a trip. Oh, yeah, I got some crap. Woo! Crap yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hey, you hey. Eight. Roger! Woo! Better than we expected. I'll stick and stay and make it pay all day long. Hey, that's decent. We can grind out on that and get our poundage in. Come on, Rocco. Damn it, Rocky. Not good. Stick those all the way back. 16, one, one. six. 16? Is that what he said? It's too crab for me in that one. I don't know if it was the right call. I think safeguard made a mistake. Sometimes you wonder what Six's thinking. It doesn't look very good. Otto is. 
We did take a big gamble. There's only so much to go around, you know. Was it worth it? Probably not. We should have picked it up and moved it up to the Northeast, and we would have done much better. But life isn't easy, so you know, you got to suck it up and swallow it. Fine. My bad. Big move paid off. I'm pretty happy with this alliance over here. Oh, come on, don't start drying up on me. For veteran Captain Keith Colburn, the hot spot has become a desert. You on there, Junior? start dwindling. I pulled uh, 40 pots for a Yankee average. Ouch. The white line never hurt nothing. What's Junior up to now? Looks like he stacked a string on and he's setting gear back where he just told me there was no crap. I'm a liar. I totally dialed Junior in on this crab up here. I just talked to him and he told me, oh yeah, I'm not seeing any crab over here to the east. Nothing over here. And yet I'm ARPA tracking him. He just turned around and he's sitting right back over there where he was. Weasel. Backslide. Well, I decided to set back on a spot that I told you about just because I'm a nice guy. That's like a total dagger in the back. Just huge fishing, huge fishing. We did almost, you know, three days with about three hours of sleep. Yeah, this is nice. On a hot streak, Captain Scott Campbell Jr. has been stuffing his tanks with blue crab. It's go time. This is what separates the men from the boys in this fishery. Now, the skipper is grinding his men to haul the last 20,000 pounds he needs for his offload. But the deckhands are at the end of their rope. We're all messed up down here, every one of them. It's been a rough, rough first trip to the boys on the sea boat. Hello? Hey, having some knee issues. It's um, progressively like getting more and more swollen. How, how bad, how swollen is it? Just a little bit or? I'm like limping around. It's progressively getting worse each time. Okay, I tell, you, I tell you what, I'm gonna come up and take a look at it here, so. All right, roger that. Oh, man. Oh, it's something. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of swung. Does it hurt to touch, or? Uh, right, yeah, like right, right there, dude. That, it's hot as too. You got an infection, dude. A uh, staph infection. Yeah, that's an infection, dude. It is? Yep. I'll get some antibiotics going right now on you. Let's see if we can get this thing licked. I've been through this before, dude. This is not anything we want to joke with. I sh you should have told me about this a long time ago, dude. And of course, our antibiotics are empty. My bad for not checking it. You know, Steiner's the deck boss, Steiner's the engineer. To have him go down has been pretty devastating for us. And me not having any antibiotics. God, it's maddening. Uh, hey, 
Good old-fashioned crab dance down on deck. That'll help. After a four-day cold streak, skipper Keith Colburn's men revive a boat tradition to change their luck. We need some crab. We need to get the hell out of here. When Keith's alliance with Junior went south, so did the wizard's fishing. But I'll tell you this. Junior burned a bridge, period. Five days ago. You want to try and make a move to get up here? There should be plenty of room. Keith turned Junior onto his hotspot. Yeah! 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 <laughs> but the young captain betrayed the veteran. The white line never hurt nothing. That's why I don't work with people. That's why I don't work with people, why I turn the radio off. Last time I ever set him on hot fishing. That's all in gear, guys. It's got a couple in it. It's got more than a couple in it. Back in business. Big money. You got the meat now. First crab in the second tank. How we doing that first one, Mouse? 17. Yes. Yeah, baby. Hey, step back, step back. Just sit here for a second. OK. Go ahead and open it up. And now, just do real quick. Can you see this finger? Yeah. OK, you see it with that eye right there? Yeah. OK, good. All right, let's get you inside and take a look at this, OK? OK. I'm just going to dab that off real quick, all right? Then we're going to see just how bad it is. It's definitely gushing, but it's a face wound. So the thing is, with face wounds, they're going to bleed like a all right? Shiner to go with it. Oh, Lenny, that is a tough spot, man. Lenny, I'm going to open this thing up. I got to put two, one sideways to the top. He's got Lenny. Just a little, just a little Thank God he gets you in the eyeball. Yeah, Real yeah, fortunate. Yeah. Lucky. Oh, so yeah. close. Anytime anything occurs around that crab block, I'm terrified. Some of the best in the business can get hurt in a split second. So now I got to go try and find some antibiotics, because we don't have any antibiotics on the boat. Uh, so it's something. And the closest boat to him? The wizard. Set your differences aside, and uh, then you go about your separate ways. You know, the closest clinics over 24 hours away by traveling. Keith, are you on here? Yeah, uh, what's up, Junior? I got a guy that he's got a localized uh, infection, and he's got heat to it. Do you guys have any, you know, pretty potent antibiotics I can cram into this kid to get this infection under control? Yeah. OK, uh, I'll just come up behind you there. OK. Roger. You know, fishing's cutthroat. It's every man for himself. If somebody needs medical help, they need something out here, you help them, period. That's part of the code out here. Give him about a week's worth. I know he's not going to be here for a week before he can make it to the clinic, but. Are ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead and throw it over. I appreciate you getting those antibiotics to me. I would have been in a pickle. Glad I'm help out. I'm out, OK? I'll, I'll be over here. 330 miles northeast of Dutch Harbor is the 125-foot Northwestern. After his numbers dropped off four days ago, 
Captain Sig Hansen moved 100 miles northeast to prospect new grounds. We'll have spread out over 60, 70 miles. And the reason I'm doing this is just to get the gear spread out and really get the lay of the land. I think my guys are pretty tired, you know. I can see it on them. Just a few plots away from finishing up. A little acre canes are starting to set in. That's the last one. I'm thinking about stopping for the night. I know you guys were fried. Why don't you guys hit the rack and go to bed? Roger. Not you, Jake. You're going to come up here and do this book. You know, Jake's talking about wanting to run a boat. And part of running a boat is also knowing how to fill out a log book properly. So I want to put him in charge of that. The fishing log is a federal requirement, and it's got to be up to date. I'm constantly pushing to move forward. If somebody's willing to take the time and train me that I can do this job. I see myself running a boat real soon. I do. Hopefully, my dream comes true. This is some of the grunt work in the wheelhouse. This is the taking out the garbage. Stuff that has to be done. I, I don't mind at all that they sit and call me up and do this for them. I love it. it. Might just be stupid numbers to some captains, but to me, it's, it's the one job I get to do and pretend that I'm skipper. Makes me feel like a captain. 40 miles northwest is the 108-foot Cape Caution, adding to the skipper's frustrations. Four days ago, Kirby, man, you got to get better. Somebody's going to get hurt. Bill gave Kirby a shot at running the hydros, and the engineer nearly crushed his own son. Oh, hey! I need Kirby right now. I need him for the engine room. I need him as the fourth guy on deck. And I got to find a spot that he's comfortable that he can perform it. That's Kirby Mitchell. The rail. He's been out of the game for a long time, and it's it's definitely showing. Oh, I suck. And he's got his son on deck, and that's got to be hard. I'm sure it's an emotional deal for Kirby um, to have his son watch him kind of flounder a little bit. I mean, we're trying to get this back on the ground. We can't be f***ed up like this. I'm not expecting Kirby to do it eight out of eight, but zero out of eight's a little different. Here we go. We got one. Oh, no! Wow, oh, it sucks. Kirby, he completely forgot how to do it again. It'd be nice for him to get on it. It's like a big ADHD kid. I doubt he'll get it. This is a young man's game. My, my mind's saying yes, but my body's saying no. Just keep trying to do my best. That's all I can do. Today, fishing sucks. We're spread out all over hell. I got a couple more strings, but it looks like this whole thing kind of went to on me. For now, at least, fast fishing and treachery are paying off for the Seabrook. 160 miles north is the 125-foot Northwestern. This is a northern string of ours, or north of the gear. Hopefully, we'll get lucky on these. Captain Sig Hansen heads for gear he's set on new grounds 48 hours ago. Oh, 
That looks like another 50. Northwestern, 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 North
And this is exactly what I was asking for. I mean, if everything we pulls like this, we'll make short work of this season. Come on, baby! <laughs> Come on, Mikey, get that God, I'm excited. I want to run harder. <laughs> run harder. More box, more box. Come on, Mikey! Go, go, go! Yo. Is that old bay in there? No. So the only new bait we're getting in these is two small handfuls. Bill catches on to Mikey's shortcut. Mikey, 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 you cannot do that, dude. Who ever told you not to dump the bait out? So is that the way we baited all day? No. That's straightforward, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Because that would have been a tough day tomorrow. It was just the last two strings that you did that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sabre Saga. I got you. How's it going? Uh, it's going all right. It's going a lot better than the dog here, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been here for a couple of weeks. It's been real nice. Uh, yeah, I've been up here. I don't know you've been in this there because I've sprayed gear all through here and I haven't seen any of your gear until today. Well, I'm actually, um, we got one of your pots got tangled up with mine there, so let me keep it on. Last season. I'm sure my buoys are rubbing your paint down the, your port side, so you might want to look at them. Junior accused Elliot of setting down the Seabrook. Well, I didn't see a there, Junior. If I'd have seen your bags, I would have set right down them. I'm not trying to you there. I guess I'm buying the real estate this year, huh? That's how we're playing it. You're going to bitch about one pot. That's how it's going. That's what we like with you last year. It's not that cool, is it? My suggestion to Elliot is to shut the up for a while. It is what it is. It's fishing. I mean, let's be realistic. Junior's kind of one in a million, you know? I am the greatest. I am the legend. I would think that I am the legend phrase will haunt him the rest of his life. If you want to play that way, I'll lay you down pot for pot. We'll really see how we can play this game. Well, there's a difference between crossing and laying down pot for pot, Elliot. One of these days, you'll realize that. I got you. E Junior. You want to talk about me on the radio, about how I fought you down? Well, how does it feel, bud? Oh, well, I didn't see any pots here. Well, dude, yeah, you did, because you had gear where my gear was. You want to play with the big dogs? That's what's going to happen. I'm excited, dude. Wild Bill's on fire! Pretty excited. We're going to see some numbers here. It's better fishing than I've seen at St. Matthew's this year. Skipper Wild Bill Rakrowski approaches hot fishing grounds he set back on 16 hours ago. Come on, keep it rolling. What's, what do I say? Ching! Ching! This had a dozen in it yesterday. One more time. Took a little wind out of my sails there. Sons of Come on, baby. Show me some love. And now, the boat is paying a big price. With his hot streak turned cold, Shuffled a little bit, see if it was a timing thing, find a new spot, we'll put the gear in there. The skipper decides to move on. You need to go up and talk to Bill. This right now, this fishing, is directly affecting what he thinks the crab is doing. 
you told Bill that it was just the last two strings that you did that, you need to take your off and go up there and talk to Bill. Hey, Bill. Things are piling up here a little today. Four crab, can't make a living on four crab. What's happening? Nothing, I want to talk about this bait situation. Just, I wasn't really sure how to handle the bait situation, so I was just taking the handfuls of new bait. You indicated that we only I just, had light bait in two of the strings. When I ask you a question, and I want the right answer. I put effort into you, you me, and none of the when we're hauling gear, get the damn bait done like you should. Get out of the wheelhouse. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pretty day today. I got bull by a 19-year-old. And it's affecting my day tremendously. I'm just greenhorn who doesn't know about bait. 50 miles north on the Red Crab Grounds is the 125-foot Northwestern. Three weeks ago. And now you're Mr. Sober Guy, and you think that you're going to get all that well, back. And it's not going to have that way. You were even thinking It's the truth. The Hansen brothers battled over Edgar's request to move up to the wheelhouse. This is why. I can't call you because of this right here. I get it. Now you think different because you're Mr. Clean and, uh, and all that. And then all of a sudden, I get this in my lap. You know, now you're, you're trying to make up for lost time, but you're not going to do it at my expense. That's just not happening. Sure. And I don't want to talk about the past, because I know you're tired of it. But sometimes you got to face reality. Don't sit there and, and pretend like it didn't happen. No, the past doesn't define you. Well, it gets you to where you are. There's two sides to a coin, Edgar. There always will be. This conversation ain't over by a long shot. With just 10,000 pounds of reds left to catch, Sig and Edgar face a tough decision. I've been thinking a lot about my brother uh, running the boat for blue, especially because I know that we're in the final lap here for the red season. Who will run the Northwestern for blue crab? You know, he's run the boat for salmon charter one time. He's run the boat for cod one time. It's not just about pushing a throttle and finding a pot. For him to skip a step or two doesn't work for me. Yeah! I like it. There's a lot of crab in the box. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. That looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what a beautiful thing. I need a bigger bug. King crab are fun, especially when you get crab, you're filling up the tanks, you see the finish line. Oh, boy. Yeah! Oh, nice spot. The hopper's dropping in! Yeah. <laughs> That's big money right there. With their tanks stuffed and their quota met, Well, I feel like the season was a, a win for us. 491 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. The legend, the legend is in our midst. Young captains Campbell and Nice find themselves fighting over the same spot. By fishing too close, both boats are losing out. We well, couple on that one. Holy. With conflict wiping out his crab counts, and 
and the cost of his new boat hanging over his head. It's a little nerve-wracking knowing that I have a boat payment of $275,000 a year, plus another $80,000 in insurance, plus I gotta pay the crew. Elliot looks to make peace. What the f Two crabs! I got my own boat now, and I'm gonna have to work side by side with that guy for probably the next 10 or 15 years. You gotta have, you know, a little humility here and there. And uh, you gotta know when to be the bigger man to say, hey, let's, let's stop this bull. This little feud between us, I just wanna bury the hatchet on the whole deal, man. This is getting kinda out of hand. I mean, we're gonna have to work together for the next 10 or 15 years, probably. So let's just bury it here, I'll buy a beer when we get to town. Just wanna, wanna end this whole thing here. I feel the same way, man. I mean, it's it's stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Roger that. After making nice, Junior extends an offer. This fishery, dude, is a two-man fishery. You cannot do it on your own. You and I both have seen that over the last couple of years. You find crab, you lose the crab. If you don't have a partner kind of spreading things out, it just it doesn't work. You and I can... I mean, we can hammer this. I mean, big time hammer it. You know, I'll work with anybody if it's going to work to my advantage. So let's get a sideband channel and let's load both these boats up and go home. My new best friend. My new best friend over there. There's got to be something. I think we can do it. Yeah, Roger that. Sounds good, Junior. I'll talk. You get shot over later. Based on their intel, Elliot and Junior see signs of a massive school heading south. Both skippers have set their gear in what they hope is the path of the crab. As the biomass hits their strings, the captains will track hits and misses and try to stay ahead of the school. If you can just keep flip-flopping and stay ahead of them, you can just kill them. And that's what we want to do. Let's do this. Two young skippers, these pots will determine if teaming up will pay off or be a bust. First pot, yeah! There's some meat here, baby! Dude, look at those crab. Unreal. Unbelievable. Yeah. 14. 14 big fatties. We'll take it. 14. Oh, yeah. And me and Junior got it dialed in pretty well. 472 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor is the 108 foot Cape Caution. I am looking forward to finishing the blues. This isn't adding up for. Captain Wild Bill Wachrowski's blue crab season has been hit and miss. Oh, no! And recently, it's just been miss. This fishery will shake a guy's confidence. The next string that we're going to run is in an area which, you know, the guys I talked to said it wasn't any good. Captain Wild Bill Wachrowski heads for some southern gear in hopes of getting back on the crab. You know what I say, I don't have high hopes, but in my gut, I'm hoping this we get some good numbers, like 10 crab an hour. Give me 10 crab an hour, and I'd be, I'll be jumping up and down. Good pot. Ching. Got it. Got it. One more day, I can breathe. Hopefully these numbers stick up. With crab coming over the rail and tanks filling up, Dutch Harbor, Alaska, on the 125 foot Northwestern. We're ready for offload. Trip went great, couldn't be happier. I just, I hope that we hit our mark. I didn't really think he could put that much crab on this boat, but uh, big crab, I'm 
That's the good news. Captain Sig Hansen and his crew offload their final haul of Red King crab. Those were big, big crabs. So, possibly might make our mark. I got the numbers! This season, the crew stuffed the tanks with a million and a half dollars worth of red crab. Each crewman's take, 45,000 bucks. We will commence starting a new season of blue crab. I am definitely ready to go fishing. Captain Elliot Neese is reaping the rewards of his alliance with the Seabrook. And it's pretty good fishing. And is only 3,000 pounds away from filling his tanks. We're filling up. We're on the knees. But just five miles ahead. Oh, man. That's definitely not going to fill the boat. That blows right there. Fishing is horrible. Captain Scott Campbell Jr. has lost the scent. Three, five, six, six, four. I think we've sucked all the crab out. And we can't finish up on these numbers. 18. Oh. Yeah, boys, 18. Woo! Ow! Yeah, buddy. We're done. Woo! You on this one? How's it going? Well, I was just going to call you there. Um, I just saw the string way out to the west. Uh, 18 average on there. Wow, huh? And that was a uh, four average for me. That oh, weird. Yeah, I, I kind of made a decision to go into town. I'm just terrified of what I see here. I'm, I'm afraid that it might be sucked up, you know, the honey hole. OK, man. Well, good luck. We'll be standing by. After three days of hot fishing, Elliot sets a course for town with his tank stuffed. My right here, he comes through that after me. I got nothing, he's got an 18 average. Leaving his partner with a decision to make. I'm telling you, dude, it's a, it's a one string wonder uh, that he found. Elliot and I plugged up the honey hole. We've kind of flipped around through it, and I just, I don't, I don't see anything that warrants us staying, you know? And whether he wants to admit it or not, that's his choice. Good fishermen can get on crab, but a great fisherman can stay with them. We had an alliance for fishing in the honey hole. We did what we wanted to do here. We achieved what we could. We sucked all the crab up, but I'm leaving. I'm cool with Junior. I want to be his friend. And we'll really see if he wants to be my friend. I'm not going to tag him along. That's my M.O. Where's Junior? Oh, he's gone. And where the f did he go? Nobody knows. I've been thinking a lot about my brother running the bowl for Blues. This is a game changer. This opportunity can make or break you. Hey, Edgar, you want to come up for a sec? So, I mean, I, I'm glad you want to run the boat for, for blues, you know, Jesus. But then it's not king crab. This is blue crab. It's bad weather the whole nine yards. I'm worried about him. You should be. You should be really worried. But you're the one that says, oh, I want to run the boat. You're the one that wants to do it. Fine. I got no problem with that. But you will fill this boat. You will get the quota. You will make it happen. Do you think you can do that? Well, we'll give it our damnedest. That's for sure. So you want to do it? Well, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for you to do this. Yeah. And I want you to. I want you to succeed. And we're done, OK? Yep. All right, thanks. All right, Edgar will be the blue crab captain. Yeehaw! Pretty there you go! I'm pretty excited about Hi, that. Man.
Edgar deserves a chance at the helm. It's just as much his boat as anybody else's that's on this boat, and his last name's Hanson. I just hope we don't get our you-know-what camp. With Edgar moving up to the wheelhouse. Tim is here. Or whatever the f his name is. Oh, our new guy? Nick. Nick. Nick's here. Sorry. Send him up. Greenhorn Nick Tokman has been hired to fill out the deck. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey, man. When are you going to get a haircut? Oh, what's that? Go get your scissors. Only <coughs> one Nick on this boat, and that's me. So. If they just say do bait or stand there, stand there. Last thing they need is another guy jumping in and then screwing things up. Okay. No bull Okay. Last Don't. go around for the year, we just want to make it through this. Don't try to be a hot shot. You're not here to impress anybody. Right. I don't give a Okay. So you're on, OK? All right. All right. Good luck. OK, thanks. Call once in a while. Let me know what's going on, OK? Checking, checking every day. Yeah. All right. Make lots of money. Yes, sir. Keep your safe. Be safe. safe. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. You'll be fine. Okay. okay. You kick it in gear. A little more. All right, see ya. Now, spinner. I'd have had it out of there by now. What a chicken. Okay, see you later. It's official. Sig's up. He's still screaming something. He's not going to stop screaming until, he, until we can't hear him anymore. Good luck. Make lots of money. What the hell is that? What the? The neck is done. Do it, sir. Well, I thought he'd last a little longer than 10 minutes. I've tried to explain to him to puke on Nick. I didn't think he was that serious at first. We're already off to a bad start. On St. Paul Island. Hell yeah! I'm down with John. The saga offloads its blue crab bounty. This is the biggest crab they've had offloaded all season, 4.4 average. 45,000 pounds. 45? Yeah. Though Captain Elliot Neese started the season yeah. late. Money in the bank! One of the youngest captains and boat owners delivered his biggest haul yet. No, I just made about $190,000 for this boat in the last five and a half days. I feel pretty good right now. You guys ready to go back fishing? Yeah, yeah. 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 let's do it. Woo. Let me hear you yeah. say it. Yeah. We should be on our gear soon. Start hauling again. The saga heads back out to the grounds, where Elliot is sharing crab and intel with Captain Scott Campbell, Jr. First trip at the helm, skipper Edgar Hansen has lost track of the crab. Pulling low numbers, the rookie captain is grinding his men to catch 16,000 pounds for his offload in six days. Running the boat without cig around, it's my time to shine, I guess. We're not catching him. Oh, starting to take his toll. Adds time to the crew's sentence on the remote blue grounds. Zero. I don't know what Sig expects of Edgar right now, or what Edgar expects to do out of this. Sucks. For aspiring skipper Jake Anderson. Place to be out here, trying to make a life decision. Doesn't help that Edgar can't catch a crab, sorry. 
Edgar's promotion to captain means Jake will have to look to another boat for a chance at the helm. I've got some big decisions I gotta make coming up. Mike Wilson approached me, he's the captain, and he used to own the boat Kiss to Sea. Approached me, said, look, I'm looking to retire in two years. We want to know if you would be interested in running the operation after I leave. Uh, put it in my back pocket. I've got to figure out what I want to do. But I can't have both. That was close. Are you trying to kill Maybar, Jake? You know, I ain't running yeah, no brain. Right? That's your brother. You need to take out him with your brother, not me. So it's so up, and it's just my fault. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't worry about catching crab. Don't worry about getting this on. Uh, I'm a crab. I'm so up with the crab. Snapped on me. I didn't snap on you. Yeah, you're snapping. Nobody gets this. Get high. Get the high. Job. What's that? You just blame me for anything. Nobody blamed you for anything. He blamed me. No one did. I'm just making sure, dude. God. No, I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. See, I'm always the bad guy. Captain Elliot Neese is back on the blue grounds looking to score big with pots on a two-day soak and still needs to hunt down another 44,000 pounds. Here we go. Let's hear that first pot. What do we got? Oh, what the f what? Nothing. Blank. Yeah. This pot had zero in it. Oh, f Yeah, Jordan, if you got him. I can hold my partner here and see what he's been seeing. Looking for intel on where the crab have gone. Hey, on here, Jenny. Roger, how's it going? Ah, it's going right. How's it going for you guys? I don't know, dude. I get pretty well dried up everywhere, I think. On his new hotspot, 50 miles southwest, Junior is not about to share. It just went to nothing. I got you. Uh, it was pretty bleak, dude. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Thought we'd just be able to stay with him and just march along with him. For the last two days you've been gone, it's just been horrible. The size of them boys! Look at that. That the is a blue crab. Absolutely horrible. These are money, dude. Yeah, today's the so, I mean, as far as what you did see up here, I mean, would you would a guy want to move to the south or the west, or are they just pretty much pretty bleak everywhere? I don't know. Seeing good stuff, Max. 20, 29 in that part right there. Captain Edgar Hansen's been grinding his crew for 20 hours straight. I might be really screwed. I might be really, really screwed right now. The crew's getting a little groggy. Matt's tired right now. Jake doesn't seem as usual chip herself, and I don't blame him. But for now, I just want to get through it. Well, we got gear to haul. These guys are still alive. You suck. There's got to be something in this train. There has to be. You run them. You know you're slow. So shut your mouth. Hey, 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 hey. What the <laughs> Are you kidding me? Who threw the first punch? You guys know it. The first guy to throw the punch is done on this boat. Who threw it? Which one? Okay. Which All right, one? Done. What's the 
problem. Yo, mouth. So what? How old are you? How old are you? Act like it. Dude, it's not just me. You can't put me just alone in this one. What happened? What? What? What did he you do? He opens his mouth. He opens his mouth. I saw him get you in a room. Shut up. Mouth. He doesn't go over there. He can shut his mouth. Why? Because he's gonna get you in a room. Shut up. Mouth. He can shut his he doesn't need to be talking to the crane guy. He doesn't need to be talking to the hydro guy. The number one rule on this boat, you don't throw a punch. You just don't. If it's that bad, wait till you get to the dock and then rip him in the I don't give a if you tear his head off. He's not innocent in this one. I know it, but you threw the first punch. It doesn't matter what a guy does to you. You should be able to eat all day. It doesn't matter. Sig so told him he next guy to throw a punch is done. He threw the first punch. Number one rule on this boat is you don't throw a punch. It's been that way for 30 years. The only two guys that I've ever seen break that rule are those two guys, Jake and Matt. Family's fight, that's just the way it is. I'm the captain right now, and I'll deal with it. Now it's up to the rookie skipper to enforce one of the boat's main rules. You fight, and you're fired. Is Jake out there? Set him up. What the f is going on? I, I, I didn't even run his hand through the block. The bag came right to the roller and they want to come at me and the, he's the most dangerous person on those hydraulics but most dangerous and he's gonna yell at me because I, at one time I accidentally I accidentally I, I my whole my whole point I know this, I point up. is I'm a that bad guy no 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 I that can. your whole I, point is punches. Jake Jake my lately. career is done now you don't even know that the last my year. career is done the, because of that move I and I'm stressed Edgar I've been through a lot of yeah. bro. I know. What's really going on? I know it's been escalating. I know it's been escalating. I got a job offer, all right? Two years to run a boat. Where? Kiskasi. And so, to, to ride the boat or to, to run, the boat? run the boat? Hold on, and I'll get to my point and why I'm so stressed out. Mike approached me, wanted to hire me to run the boat. Uh, it's his replacement in two years, his relief, and then it'll go full time after that. And he said, well, I want to train you. Maybe this helps you. Let's go, let's just step back for two seconds. When everybody else offloaded the boat, got the bait on board, you were gone for nine hours on that no, boat. Yeah, yeah, I don't make I timed that it. Up. I timed nine it. Nine hours. You disappeared. You were gone that was, all day. No, that wasn't nine Jake, hours. I'm not lying to you. Don't yell at me because one time, one time, I went over to another boat and talked to him about my future. How many times have those guys left me with the bait bags? You and me with the bait bags. We've cleaned them. I usually clean them every time. And I have fun doing Number it. Number one is you're hired as a deckhand on this boat. No more, no less. You understand? You're paid as a deckhand. So am I. How many times do we offload and those go and get drunk? So one time I've offloaded this boat. It's been 30 hours by myself. Offload never grab just club. one day, I mean, and I never complained about that. You know, I'll you. Oh, what I'll say nothing but love you. What does for you? What does sick do for you? you? Okay, you know what? What I hear. I'm done. This. I love you, man. Every time and you we treat go to me town. like. Oh my god, I hate my life so much. Well, Jake, I'm not impressed. 
for rookie captain Edgar Hansen. A fight leaves the skipper with a problem on board. Uh, right now, I need him here to get this done. Get out, so. Having to rely on the instigator, Jake Anderson. Well, you're there, I'm not. So let's uh, you're, uh, you know, if it was me, I would tie him up. Stick him in his bunk. But I'm not there. Yeah, well, you're not. You're right. And I need him out there. I've got two more days. I'm going in. I'm delivering. We're all going home. What happens after that? If he's still here, I don't know. Uh, he's on the fence with me. That's all I know. Yeah. Will Sig fire him? Probably. He does have a lot of growing up to do. That's pretty obvious. So here's the deal. With our average at 3,000 pounds a day, we'll be done in two days. Well, I think it's up to these two guys here. So we're all on the same page? Yeah. All right, so we got the game plan. Everybody knows. All right. We're going to have to go like the wind here to get these on. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski steers the Cape Caution towards its final string. Two five. If this keeps up, we are definitely going home today. <laughs> You know how many times I've thrown the hook in my career? <laughs> I'm doing this, everybody shuts up. I guess uh, today's the day to see if uh, Captain Bill can still throw the iron. Wild Bill takes the rail for the last string of King Crab. Ching! Nice shot! extra help from their captain. This season, the crew of the Cape Caution raked in $579,000 of King Crab. Each hand's take-home pay, $30,000. 466 miles southeast on the Time Bandit. There's a school of crab right down there right now. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand cruises to the finish line of King season. This could be our high pot. Yeah. Got to break 100. We're waiting for that special 100 plus. And the fishing just keeps getting better. 8-8. Eight, eight. Not a bad, look at that one. Holy moly. Yeah. It's even better. Yeah. It. That's serious crab fish in there. That's as good as it gets. There's a lot of critters in there. They barely come out of the pot. Unbelievable. That's beautiful. You have good fish, I'll tell you that. Money pot! Look at that pot! Yeah! Yeah! He's got a few more pots left, and that's it for us. Need 67 more. We got three pots, so I'm sure we're going to accomplish. I got 67. Yes, it does. Yeah, 67 of those in the tank. Gently put the other crab back in the ocean. We got two more pots. We'll give the ocean back its bounty for next year. Oh, get them up. That's a good way to finish the season. The 107 foot saga. <laughs> yeah! Is that a four or 14? 14. 
If we came out late, we've caught more crab in the last 10 days. A lot of guys caught in the last month and a half. Boys are in them. Yeah! Captain Elliot Neese is on the home stretch of his first season as both skipper and boat owner. Another nice pot. My dad's proud of me. I wanted to come out here and know, show my dad I really knew what I was doing out here. I'm glad I could share it with you, Dad. It's awesome. Good season, Elliot. After arriving late for the season, the saga still racked up a cool 120,000 pounds of Blue King crab worth 486,000 bucks. Each hand will pocket nearly 20 grand. For any of you mother who doubted me, you. Cause I'm the real deal, Doom. Just outside Dutch Harbor. We had a good season. We worked for it. We earned it. And I'm gonna celebrate on the way to town. Time by the style. Oh, look at that candy. Woo! It's like Christmas time. It is. Pulling into Dutch Harbor, we're gonna light up the sky. It's time to celebrate. Hey, guys. Hell of a season. Let them rip, baby. Oh. Bring us in over there, Mikey. Well, let's put our bow lines on that yellow cleat. There you go, sir. Right now, we're offloading our final load of king crab. All of our pots are on board and offload and go we're home. Done! Ah! We're done, we're done, we're done, yeah! With his last load of red crab, the Time Bandits' totals are in. 121,000 pounds, worth $968,000. For their hard work, the crewmen will receive $42,000 each. And here we are, happy to see Dutch Harbor again. I am, at least. I'm pretty sure the other guys are, too. <laughs> one by one. The remaining boats in the fleet return to home base in Dutch Harbor. On the Wizard. Oh, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> right now, it looks like I'm inside of a box, but this isn't the box I want to be inside of. <laughs> Keith Colburn and crew stockpiled 200,000 pounds of crab worth just over $1 million. Got all of our crab. Get out of here early. You really can't ask for anything more than that. Each hand is walking away with 32,000 bucks. At the south end of the dock. Making our last offload. On the Seabrook. It's freedom unloading right there. It's exactly what that is, it's freedom. Junior's crew made the largest blue crab haul, 147,000 pounds worth $675,000. Glad it's over, glad we pushed as hard as we did. The deck chair. 25 grand a piece. The Northwestern steams into the harbor. Well, we're getting close. Let's get your lines ready and your buoys out. Finally back in Dutch Harbor. I get to do what I want to do the most. Go home, sit on the couch, and relax to old peace. Let my body heal up, come back and do it all over again. On top of Sig's one and a half million dollar red crab haul, Edgar adds 27,000 pounds of blue crab worth another $120,000. For the 10-day trip, each crewman picks up another five grand. For Jake Anderson, this could be the last time he steps off the Northwestern. Jake, if he has another place to go and do his own thing, well, then fine. You know, go do it. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I know I want to run boats, even if it costs me my job on the Northwestern. That's, that's what I've been fighting for the last two years. That's what's going to make my dad proud. You're not better than anybody else. You're not that great. OK, you got a long way to go.
We're just, everybody's getting together at Sig's house for uh, basically a powwow. And uh, Sig's heard rumors about me leaving. And this is gonna be the hardest thing to sit there and talk to him at the table about. And I can't go and tell Sig that I'm gonna leave when I'm not even sure if I'm gonna leave. The truth is I'm scared, I'm petrified to leave. Anything could happen. There he is. Housekeeping. What's up? <laughs> what up, Jakers? A company offered me a job running a boat. And I'm freaked out about it. I'm so scared about it. I've never been so scared in my life. I'm scared as hell to leave. But I have to move forward. I have to. And I hate doing that to you. I love you like a dad. It breaks my damn heart to leave. Besides my family at home, you guys are all I've got. That's all I've had to get through this bull that I've been through. It's the only place I know. So you're either in or you're out. You, you know, you got to make up your mind. You got to make a decision and stick with it, right or wrong. And the reason I can say this is because that's the exact words my dad gave to me. Obviously, if this doesn't work out for you, there's no guarantee we have a spot for you back on the Northwestern. Are you on or are you off? I think I'm off. You're off the boat? I'm off the boat. All right, you yeah. gotta do what you gotta do, man. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much for everything you've done. Shell shock and line lock. Don't know if I can leave, but I feel like yeah. to ride. Thanks for the kick, man. Good luck, bro. Good luck, man. What the hell? Is that him? Three in the afternoon, wasted. Feel my father disappear. Go away. <laughs> when are you going to teach me how to run a vessel? What makes you think you're going to be up here all of a sudden? <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, nine, baby. Oh, I got some guts in there. What are you doing? Oh. Into the sun. That's not quitting a job. That's not about moving ahead. That's. Leaving home. I love these guys. They're my family. <laughs> On your knees. We're going to knight you. Dick Boss, Northwestern. I got to do this. This is everything I've worked for. Whether I fail or not, it's on to the next chapter. Now better run.